This is an EM Pulse mini series, Push Dose Pearls, with your hosts, Sarah Medeiros and Julia Magagna. Welcome back to another episode of Push Dose Pearls, our ongoing series of brief podcasts that addresses the questions that we all have regarding medications in our emergency department. And we are back with Chris Adams, our ED clinical pharmacist at UC Davis, and our very own e Pulse pharmacist. And today in our episode of Push Dose Pearls, we are going to talk about push dose pressers. It's about time, I guess, with that for a title. <laughs> So, Chris, start us off. What exactly is a push-dose presser? So it's the idea of utilizing some kind of vasopressor to provide a brief period of uh, hemodynamic support for a patient. And when would you actually use that? So this is an important question. A time period for the use of this is when you're bridging a patient from, say, a period of hypotension to an infusion. These are very short-acting agents, vasopressors. And so if you're administering a push of this medication, you're really only providing a transient period of hemodynamic support. And so the idea of vasopressors is to utilize them as a continuous infusion. So realistically, these medications are dangerous. And in the wrong hands, they can be potentially harmful to patients. And so utilizing them as a continuous infusion provides us a safety buffer, a nice way to to administer it in a safe manner. The other period where I think it would be useful is in a temporary or transient period of unstable hemodynamics where a patient is likely to recover rapidly. Sarah, when do you use push-dose pressors? So I think about it in, for example, a case where maybe we've had a, a code, a cardiac arrest, and we've gotten ROSC and we are getting an EpiDrip ready and the, you know, heart rate or the pulse starts to wane a little bit. And I think, ah, this, you know, if we can just get a little bit more epi on board, that would be helpful. And so maybe it's a good time to use a, a push of epi while we're bridging to that epi drip. Yeah, bridge seems like the right term to use here. When should you not use a push dose presser? In a situation where a patient is going to need continued hemodynamic support, in a scenario where a patient like is likely, like a septic patient, is likely to continue to be hemodynamically unstable, those patients need a continuous infusion. So realistically, uh, this only provides a short period of time. Otherwise, the provider, the nurse, whoever is, is administering those medications is at bedside administering small doses of an individual syringe over and over and over again. So realistically, if you identify this patient is going to have continued hemodynamic instability, start a continuous infusion. What about a peripheral line? Peripheral lines are just as good as a central line in these very emergent scenarios. So I think it's important to highlight here, you certainly can use peripheral lines. Obviously, with vasopressors, a central line is preferred, but that's also not possible in these emergent scenarios in a lot of cases. So peripheral lines, perfectly good option in these specific cases. Okay, so which pressors can we push? So the most common uh, pressors that are available as a push are phenylephrine as well as epinephrine. These medications already come in a pre-made syringe, so they're extremely easy to push as a push-dose presser. In addition, there is some utilization of norepinephrine as a push-dose presser. However, that really has not made its way into emergency medicine practice. More commonly, that's practiced in an OR setting. So some of the protocols or suggestions for push-dose pressures that I've seen have required us to pull up a small amount and dilute it and then push it. You're mentioning already coming in a pre-made syringe. What is your approach to push-dose pressers as far as dose and rate? Phenylephrine is easy. It's a, a medication in a syringe that is available to be pushed in individual aliquot doses. So there is no need for dilution of phenylephrine. Epinephrine, however, comes in a one milligram syringe and therefore each 0.1 ml volume contains 100 micrograms of epinephrine. That's a fairly large dose to be pushing for each patient, especially pediatric patients, and that's challenging. For adults, 100 micrograms is tolerable, but realistically, we should be aiming for lower doses, say 10, 20, uh, even 50 micrograms of epinephrine. So in order to create that, 
the easiest way is to take that 0.1 mLs of an epinephrine syringe and then dilute that in uh, 9 mLs. So you're making a total volume of 10 mLs with 10 micrograms of epinephrine. So again, you would take 1 mL of that epinephrine syringe and then dilute it in 9 mLs for a total of 10 mLs with 10 micrograms of epinephrine in 1 mL. So you're not pushing it into the saline bag. Exactly. <laughs> so that, that, uh, the idea of utilizing a saline bag as your diluent or even creating a, quote, dirty epi bag, it has its place. But at the same time, that's extremely difficult to, one, titrate, as well as potentially dangerous, depending on what if you know what you're doing and how much you need to administer, as well as how do you continue therapy when you transition to a known concentration bag? You really don't know how much you were giving in that one bag, and now you're transitioning to another bag that that you just have no idea how to transition. So what are the potential downsides of using a push-dose presser? What kind of side effects or effects should we be looking for? Obviously, if you give too much, then we're looking for a severe tachycardia, tachyarrhythmia, or um, of hypertension. In those situations, obviously, that's not good for patients, especially if they're suffering from uh, cardiac disease. Um, however, most of the time, these are relatively well tolerated, even at larger doses. The other significant side effect that is uh, common, especially in these peripheral lines, is that you may have extravasation resulting in uh, significant tissue damage around the site of that extravasation event. So it sounds like you're suggesting giving like 10 to 20 micrograms and you give it over how long when you're pushing it? Generally, these are rapid boluses. So you're giving 10 to 20 micrograms in just a matter of seconds, five seconds. And then they only last for roughly two to five minutes at most. And so you're probably going to be needing to give repeat doses if a continued need persists. And so the onset is pretty quick as well. You should be seeing a rapid onset. However, with that being said, we do need to make sure that these are flushed because it's such a small volume that if you're giving that dose, it may still be in the line before it even reaches the patient. So a flush is really important in this situation. That's a good point. We have to worry about that in kids all the time because our doses are so small, uh, which actually takes me to my next question. What about push dose pressers in kids? Certainly have their place. However logistically much more challenging. We're talking about a far smaller dose, far smaller volume, and so we just have to be cognizant of that. Having a plan to create a dilution that provides the appropriate dose is really challenging, and so pediatric patients certainly present with a need potentially for a push dose of a vasopressor. However, it's just a, a hard situation to make happen. Yeah, it really is. Um, and I think that it's not one that is best done in the heat of battle, making that decision. You know, I definitely think it is helpful to come up with a battle plan before you make those decisions in the middle of the night, especially with kids. How do you recommend institutions approach push dose pressures in the emergency department? Simply have a plan. And Perhaps not just a plan in your own mind, a, a written down protocol, procedure, or at least agreement among practicing medical professionals. So make sure that your pediatric team knows exactly how this is going to happen, where the medication is going to come from, what syringe size it's going to go into, and what the final concentration is going to be. If you don't have pre-made options available, and most institutions don't, that plan is going to save you the time to create whatever vasopressor you're going to utilize, as well as to hopefully ensure safety associated with the use of that vasopressor. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense to me. And this is why I love having an ED pharmacist on hand. <laughs> <laughs> what I'm here for. All right, that's it for now. Thanks again, Chris. Really appreciate your insight. 